are you? Where am I? What happened? You're in Death's Lair, Matt. Your spine was torn out from your girlfriend, and as you guessed it, I'm Death. Now I have plans for you, Matt signed this contract in blood and a mystical yet mysterious girl. It was another normal day at PRC High School and Matt was in his Spanish class drawing a gruesome picture in his notebook. The teacher, Mrs. Jones, slammed her hand on Matt's desk and said, Matt, put that away and pay attention, now. Matt put the sketch away and noticed that everyone in class was silently laughing at him. So he brushed his dark blonde hair and rolled his eyes as the teacher headed to the chalkboard once again. After class ends and the bell rings, Matt stood up and stretched. But not without noticing that a fellow classmate was staring at him from the back of the classroom. But he paid no mind to her and grabbed his backpack and said, If all you can do is stare at me, you won't get anywhere you know. She stayed silent and pointed at him Matt shrugged as he opened the door and saw the girl standing at the end of the hall. Matt looked at the desk she was at and noticed that it was empty. As he looked back at the hallway, she was gone. He rubbed his eyes and said, Who is that? Murdered to save. After walking out the room, Matt heads to his car and unlocked it. But before he got in he saw his girlfriend walking towards him with one hand behind her back. Matt smiled and said, Hi April. You need a ride home. April hugged Matt and said, No thanks, all I need is she stabbed Matt's back with a large knife, and tore his spine out, and stabbed his neck with it. Matt fell to his utter demise and said, Why? April frowned and said, I'm so sorry, but this is going to make you stronger, much stronger. The time you return is the time the world needs you most. Goodbye, Matt. May you once again save us all. Death's Chamber. Matt. Matt. Open your eyes boy. What? Who? Who are you? Where am I? What happened? You're in Death's Lair, Matt. You was torn out from your girlfriend, and as you guessed it, I'm Death. Now I have plans for you, Matt signed this contract in blood and you're free to return to Earth, for your mission that we have made for you. Matt, whom of which is confused, hesitantly signed a contract and returned to Earth, but with the uncontrollable urge to kill and mutilate anyone and everyone he sees. Let's begin the true legacy of, Matt the Blood Spine. Meeting with death and a new partner. Blood Spine? What are you talking about? Matt asked death. He answered not with words yet. He showed Matt his back with a mirror. His spine was pulled from him and possessed blood and large, sharp spikes leading down his entire back. Matt smiled and said, Fine then, I shall accept and sign the contract. Death chuckles and said, Then, your blood. Matt cut his hand on his spine and imprinted his hand on it and asked, who must I kill until I'm redeemed? Death smiled and said, All who oppose the two of you, Matt raised a brow and said to Death, Two. Of us. But it's just me. Death snapped his bony fingers and a girl with snow white colored hair and red glowing eyes walked towards the two and said, My name is Winters Gracie, I'll be helping you on your mission. It's a pleasure to meet you, Matt. He looked at Winters and laughed as he said, Are you serious? You're sending a girl that is probably only 5 foot 2 with me. 
You can't be serious now. Winters growled and jumped on Matt's back and said, For the record, I'm 19 years old, and I can easily take you down. Death smiled and said, It seems like the two of you will get along just fine. Sharing pasts. The two turned their heads and pooched their mouths as Death laughed. Death stopped and said, I expect you both to complete the contract of black blood. Now Matt, your destiny awaits you. He snapped his fingers, sending both Matt and Winters back to Earth. After appearing in a beautiful, large breezed field, Matt and Winters looked around but eventually found themselves laying on their backs and looking at the blue sky above them. Winters sighed and said, Matt, what happened to you? How did you die? Matt turned his head to hers and asked her, Does it matter? She blinked and he said, I guess to you, it does. When I was human, someone very close to me cut me open and tore me to shreds. I think her last words to me were, You will become a hero, some nonsense like that. What about you? What happened to you, Winters? She turned her head away and asked, You won't hate me will you Matt? He smiled and looked at the sun's rays and said, Of course not. Even though we've just met, you're my friend. And friends aren't supposed to hate each other. So tell me, I won't judge nor hate you, I promise. Winters blushed and said, I was murdered by my father when I turned 13 years old. He did, things to me as well. But I imagine you know exactly what I mean. After my death, I was in death's chambers. Throughout the years, I trained under death's command and when I met you is when he seemed more like the sensei I trained with. Memories first reveal. Winters looked at Matt's eyes and said, You know something Matt? You have the cutest eyes I've ever seen. You're cute. Matt blushed and suddenly fell to his side and covered his face with his grey hands and screamed in pain as a memory was revealed to him. A girl with sandy brown hair sat next to him and said, You're cute. Who are you? The memory vanished from Matt's mind and eyes he collapsed and fell unconscious. Winters hurried to him worried, and sat him up trying to wake him up. But he did not. Until, midnight. Matt opened his eyes and saw Winters sleeping in lap holding a blood-soaked dagger in her left hand. Matt looked around him and saw what looked like angels and human soldiers. Matt smiled and said, Just rest easy, Winters. You fought hard. And thanks for, protecting me. BFFs. Winters sat up, rubbed her eyes and said, Matt, you're safe? Good. Matt smiled and put his hand on her head and said, You protected me, yet we don't really know each other. Why? Why me? Why put- <laughs>
shielding both he and Winters in a bone-shaped shield and said, I'm not in the mood to play with you fools. You'd better hope you never see us again. Winters and Matt teleport from the fields to a mountain peak. A kiss. Matt stood at the edge and looked at the lands below with a sad look on his face and said, What am I? Who am I, and what's really happening to me? All these questions are hurting my head. But I still have no answers as to what they mean and are. I guess it's time to eat. He turned his head and saw Winters standing behind him. After a few moments pass, Winters pulled back and said, Just relax a bit. You're tired. I'll keep watch on the place. Just sleep in for now. Matt the blood spine. Matt nods and asked, Why the kiss? Do you love me or something? Winters blushed and said, Not particularly no, but in some ways, yes. Matt giggles and lay down, closed his eyes and said, If you need help, just wake me. Patching up Winters and first foe. Matt woke up to the ground shaking and he saw Winters' true form. It terrified him and he said, Winters. You're hurt. Let me help you. He pulled out a long sword and pulled out a bottle of wine and said, This may sting a bit so try not to kill me okay Winters. He tore a piece of his shirt off and applied the wine and she swung her fist on the ground as she groaned in pain. Matt wrapped the cloth around her leg and sat next to her and she said, Those humans are just so darn persistent. They just don't know when to give up. But thanks for patching my injury, I appreciate it. Matt smiled and said, It's my duty to take care of you, is it not? But that's not why I helped you. And I'd rather not say the reason right now anyways. Just rest up, I've gotten a battle with that. Matt points to the skies out the mountain and a massive, fiery, blazing bird flying over the lands, setting them ablaze. Matt's spine turned into bone-like wings and he flew towards the phoenix. The insane one. As Matt and the phoenix clash and lands burn, Winters was sitting on the peak of the mountain and said, He's better than I thought. Sensei. What did you think of him? Why him? Death walked towards her and said, He's quite the fighter but, something is missing. I chose him because of the fact that he wields the courage and strength to fight both gods and devils. Plus his murder only makes him more dangerous and powerful. What do you think Winters? She licked her lips and said, He's tasty, and interesting. I think I like him. Death smiled and said, You mean you love him? Winters blushed and said, Yes, I do. Is that bad? He smiled and said, No, it's not. It's part of growing up, you're still young so enjoy it. By now, Winters. Death vanished and Winters looked up as the phoenix was on its back with tons of blood spraying from its neck until its head was severed from its body and Matt, now covered in blood was laughing psychotically and his face was that of which one has lost all sanity and control. Winters blushed and said, that's the Matt I want. The insane one. Fixing the monster's form. Matt walked to the mountains, dripping blood in his path and a creepy smile on his face. As he grew closer, his true form revealed. His spine had given him bone claws, tail, and armor. His eyes were black and red, 
the color of death itself. Winters held her arm out and Matt looked at her and said, Winters, help me. Stop fighting me boy. You will succumb to your link of destiny. Matt fell to his knees and lost all control. He stood up with no control over his actions. He attacked Winters and she shouted, Matt. Kissed the monstrous Matt and he returned to normal, collapsed and asleep.